Let's now talk about object-oriented programming, OOP. Now, OOP, or object-oriented programming, is really a discipline for writing programs. And it differs from the discipline of, um, of, of what's called a procedural language. So you have this thing called an object-oriented programming language, an OOP language, and a procedural language. And C is a procedural language, and Objective-C is not, which, which is kind of interesting. And I'll talk about that uh, when, I, when I give you an overview of Objective-C in a few minutes. And a car is a thing. And an object, in, in object-oriented programming terminology, you could think of an object as a thing also. And object-oriented programming is about dealing with objects. And once again, we're going to take as our example here of an object, a car. Now, when you have a car, well, a car comes from the factory, it gets manufactured. And car is a very general term um, that refers to all, all, could refer to all different types of cars. And there are things that you do with your car. If you have a car, you just buy your car, you're going to do things, you're going to drive it, certainly. You're going to fill it up with gas when the gas tank gets low. Hopefully you'll wash it periodically, and you'll take it into servicing. So we have this concept of an object, and then we have this other concept of things that we do with that object. And in this example of the car, we are saying that we'll do some basic things like driving it, filling it up with gas, washing it, and taking it in for service. So let's go to some terminology here. An object is something that comes from a class. Sometimes it's actually, we actually say that it's manufactured from the class or created from the class. In this, uh, uh, in this analogy, our class is called cars. And every time I get a new object or a new car, uh, I basically get a unique car off, uh, from my class. So even though I might have a car coming off the assembly line and they might look identical, we know that each and every car that comes off there is unique in at least uh, its vehicle identification number, its VIN number. So even perfectly identically looking cars have some unique way to identify them. We refer to a particular object that gets created from a class, not only as an object, but also refer to it as an instance. So an instance um, is a particular object that gets created from a class. So um, each car, as I mentioned, uh, will be different in one or more ways. And as the cars get driven by their individual owners, they'll each get different characteristics. One car will have different mileage than the other car. The other car, at any given uh, point in time, will have a, uh, maybe a quarter of a tank full of gas, while the other might have a full tank of gas. One car might uh, have only uh, an inch left of tread on its wheels, on its tires. So as, as you use your objects or as you use your cars, they each uh, kind of um, get their own individual characteristics or, or, or data, basically, that is unique to that particular car. And, and this analogy of cars is really mapped so well um, to the whole world of object-oriented programming. So if you're following along right now, you'll see that it's actually a, a very nice transition from this real-world example into the world of, uh, of dealing with object-oriented programming. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this idea of a car and actions we perform on the car and apply some syntax and terminology to kind of mold it into an Objective-C uh, expression. So what's a method? Well, a method is really the action you perform on an object or on a class. So we talked about actions that we're performing with our car, right? We might wash it, service it, fill it with gas. Uh, those are actions. So if we wanted to put this into an Objective-C syntax, uh, which is the way you would obviously write in your program, Objective-C uses this left bracket. It uses this right bracket notation. And in between the two, we have first listed a class or an instance. So we have the name of a class or an actually object or an object that came from that class. And then we list the action that we want to perform on that class or on that object. And in uh, uh, object-oriented programming parlance, we can also refer to the uh, item that appears immediately after the left bracket as the receiver and the second item as the message. So we send a message to an object to ask it to perform some uh, particular action. For example, wash, go ahead and wash yourself or fill, fill this car up with gas, etc. So what we do here is we take the, um, the analogy
lousy of our car, and we're going to translate it into the syntax uh, of Objective-C that I just mentioned. The first step we want to do is we want to ask the class to give us a new car. So we go to our class, the name of our class here is car, and we ask it for a new car. And from a programming point of view, we take the car that comes back and we store it away in a variable. Here we call that my car. So my car is now a unique car that was just manufactured from the factory. All right? And now we can reference that particular instance or object, that particular car, through this variable name, my car. And here's where we go ahead now and perform actions on our object. We send a wash message to my car. We send a drive message to my car. We send a service message to my car. And we send a top-down message to my car. So these are, once again, this is the, my car is the receiver of the message. And these are the actual methods that we're asking uh, to be executed, or the actual message that we're sending um, to our object. So the, let's, let's move away from this real-world application of cars now. And let's talk about objects that you're actually going to be using in your iPhone applications. But notice they follow the same paradigm that I mentioned. You might have a table which comes from a class called a UI table or UI table view. And you might want to send in a message which says, reload all the data for that table. So this is the syntax you might see in an actual iPhone applications. We send the reload data message to my table to get the table data reload. Well, here we're going to actually load in an image that's part of our application, which is maybe a pic picture of an apple. And it's a PNG formatted graphics file, let's say. And so we ask the UI image class to look for this image called apple.png and actually load it in and create a new object from it. So once again, here's a class called UI image. He has a method called image name. This is a little different syntax. We have a colon, and it gets followed by an argument. So that's an extension to the syntax that I just talked about. Here's, a, um, here's an example where I might want to find how many times a button was tapped and count to see if it was a single click, a double click, and so forth. So I send the tap count message to this UI touch object called touch. And I say, how many times were you tapped? And I get the result back, and I store it in N. Once I have that result stored in N, I can again go ahead and do things like say, well, if N is equal to 1, it was tapped once. If N is equal to 2, it was tapped twice, and take some appropriate action based upon that result. In this last example, I have a label on my iPhone's display, which I'm calling my label. And I want to set the text on that label to this string of characters, hello world. So I give that as an argument to my set text method. All right? So once again, I'm sending the set text message to my label and asking it to set the text to this string of characters for the world. Now, if you've ever programmed in C before, you'll say, hey, that's a little funny. You've got that at sign there. I don't, I've never seen that before in a C program. Well, um, the difference is that the at sign creates actually a string object in Objective-C, whereas uh, Without the at sign, we create a C-style character string. So once again, just a little um, information there for those of you who may have a C programming background. So here, once again, these are some, um, some examples of objective C code, sending messages to objects, and in some cases, uh, passing parameters as well. One of the nice things about uh, object-oriented programming is once you write a method, a set of methods for class, and we're going back to our car class again, those methods can be used for all different cars that come out of that class. So in other words, I can wash my car, but Sue can also wash her car. And we can use the same method to do that. So if I have a car that came out of the factory and I stored it in Sue's car, a variable called Sue's car, I could still send, I can then send the wash message to Sue's car. I could send the drive message to Sue's car. And I could send the service message to Sue's car. So once again, I get to reuse these methods for all objects that get created from that class, which is one of the, ni one of the um, nice uh, and, and important attributes of object-oriented programming. 